Thank you, Chairman, and I'm sorry to, to pick on you, Dr. Diesel, but I also want to follow up on the studies. I didn't know that's where my colleague was going to take you. How many of your studies you talk about did multi-regression analysis? Uh, most of the 50 studies that I've been referring to used um, multiple regression analysis, meaning they controlled for many other yeah, I, I know what it, what it means. <laughs> um, and you mentioned the word association as opposed to statistically a difference. Mm -hmm. So did any of these have a statistical difference or were they all just associations? Most of the studies observed statistically significant associations, meaning an increased risk of Well, that's two different, you're the epidemiologist, but those are two different terms from a study to say it's, there's an association versus statistical difference, meaning two standard deviations outside of the mean. Most of the studies did observe statistically significant. Then what in your testimony did you use the word uh, just associated? Um, just, to, uh, just trying to use sim simple terms. Okay, all right, well that's helpful. So much of this is done with, uh, with, uh, with with uh, religion as opposed to science, so we're trying to see where we can agree on the science. Um, Dr. Gary, for, for, for you, you're the economist here. Two of the tax benefits that are often talked about are the percentage depletion allowance and the intangible drilling cost. If we eliminated those, how would they impact someone like Exxon or Shell, Chevron, some of those big oil companies? Marginally, uh, I think every study, if you look at the full suite of tax expenditure subsidies, have only a marginal effect on uh, promoting uh, production. Uh, so it would increase their tax bill for sure, but as far as production and prices go, it would have a de minimis effect. So my understanding that the folks that benefit from these, from the, from the bottom line, are, are the small producers. Small producers like in Kansas making five or 10 barrels per day and that they, these larger companies don't benefit from them. So I think that's a common mis misconception. Mm -hmm. And I think it's so important for national security that we have more than four big oil companies making oil and gas for this world, and, and that these small oil producers need those uh, to stay in business. I want to talk about methane for a second as well, and, and probably go back to Dr. Diesel. A third of the methane uh, produced in this country is from wetlands and about 20% from city landfills. You spoke about methane in, in particular. Did your studies take that into account? Were these uh, locations close to uh, some type of wetlands or to city landfills as well? Thank you for the question. Actually, my studies did not focus on methane. Um, my studies focused on more of the hazardous emissions coming from oil and gas sites. Methane contributes to climate change, so in that sense it's hazardous, but um, my studies looked at the more immediate consequences of exposures to toxic. But certainly methane is, is one of the major you know, concerns for greenhouse gases from the oil and gas industry. You know, it, we, certainly oil and gas industry needs to own that that about a third of them do come from the oil and gas industry, but a third of them come from wetlands as well. So are you suggesting we should like, I don't know, what, bulldoze in the wetlands too? Uh, it's a rhetorical question, I shouldn't have asked it uh, as well. Um, so often in this, in this world we live in, in DC, um, we, we, we try to think about the environment in, in different perspectives. And certainly I just, want the chairman to know, my friends across the aisle, that I want to leave this world cleaner, healthier, and safer than we found it. But also we need to think about affordability and reliability when it comes to energy as well. That this administration's policies have been an attack on certainly American energy, it's been an attack on American agriculture, and it's been an attack on the hardworking Americans as well. When we see grocery prices going up 20, 25%, energy cost, oil and gas, um, utility cost as well going up over 30%, that's an attack on hardworking Americans. So I guess my question is, when we make policies, do we ever think about the affordability and the reliability of energy as well? I think I'll just leave it there. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Question was rhetorical. You're not seeking an answer from any of the witnesses. The question was rhetorical, just to be clear. No, it's not rhetorical. I think I'm just out of time and trying to be respectful oh. uh, of, of our time. Thank okay. you.
Uh, I think next up is Senator. Hey, before you click on the next video, if y'all could do me a big favor and hit that like button. The algorithm loves it, and so do I, because it helps promote these videos and get the message out about what our government has been doing. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on your notifications, because every time I put out a video, you want to know about it, right? Thanks again, and have a good one. See you on the next one. Peace.